Hello, uh, I'm Nat Ogle. I'm here in uh, Watstones on Tottenham Court Road, just for a start shift. And um, I'm really pleased to have been asked to uh, share three uh, books that have inspired the writing of this book, In the Seeing Hands of Others, uh, my debut. It's um, a novel formed as a kind of case file that uses various personal and official documents to intertwine the lives of a couple of people. Um, as a nurse uh, who works on a dialysis ward, and is uh, trying to live in the aftermath of a rape trial in which her attacker is acquitted. And then there is a attacker, her ex-boyfriend, um, whose attempts to distract himself from his guilt while on bail just lead him further to the fringes of society. Um, it's a novel about what it means to care and to damage, and it asks questions about um, the responsibilities we have for one another and um, the ways that we can come to terms with vulnerability. All right, so the uh, first book that I've chosen is uh, Woman at Point Zero by uh, the Egyptian uh, feminist writer and dissident Noel El Sadawi. And um, this is a kind of fictionalized biography, kind of uh, life story of a woman um, awaiting her execution in a Cairo prison um, after killing her sex trafficker. And it's a real story about a real woman called uh, Firdaus that um, Elsa Dewey interviewed. And um, uh, Fidel's story is uh, heartbreaking. Um, it's one of uh, abuse and exploitation, but in the end, I think, defiance. Um, and reading this book really, uh, really made me look closer at the complexities of uh, responsibility, agency, and subordination in uh, patriarchal societies. And um, it showed me the power of uh, bearing witness to both extreme and everyday forms of cruelty and um, which is something that's informed how I have uh, written my book and um, my writing generally. Okay so the second book I have is uh, As I Lay Dying by the American writer William Faulkner. It's um, a classic of multiple perspective fiction and it revolves around a poor white family in um, depression era American South and the death and um, specific funeral request of the matriarch. Um, and this leads to a really gripping family drama, I think, and a kind of odyssey that um, is full of secrets and lies and betrayals and um, class and gender and religious tensions. And um, what Faulkner does really well here that I've tried to incorporate in my writing is um, his handling of the toxic sibling dynamics um, how he choreographs his uh, multiple perspectives and um, his ability to uh, differentiate and particularize the narrator's voices, uh, which all give a really strong sense of place. It's kind of um, alchemical writing to me and um, something I really aspire to. And uh, lastly, we've got I'm Jack by Mark Blacklock. And um, it's gonna be pretty obvious why I've picked this one um, as I describe it, because it's uh, formed as a kind of case file and it uses uh, various personal and official documents. Um, but it does it to ventriloquize and imagine the life of John Humble, uh, also known as Wearside Jack, who was the man who um, impersonated the Yorkshire Ripper in the late 70s with phone calls and uh, letters. And this um, derailed the police investigation because um, they were looking for a man with a Wearside accent. And uh, this allowed Peter Sutcliffe to continue his attacks on women. Um, Humble was uh, imprisoned 25 years after this and this is where the novel picks up the story and um, what follows is a uh, really incredible um, study of the prism of the hoax's personality and the book kind of, kind of works as a hoax itself um, which is really cool to me and um, yeah I'd never really read anything with a documentary form before and that really opened my eyes and um, changed how I approached writing fiction. Um, uh, so I think, uh, yeah, my novel wouldn't really exist without this one. So there you go.